Walked out to Wham's Wake Me Up Before You Go Go <laughs> because yesterday was the first day of You Know Who's Hush Money trial, and among the many reports coming out of the courtroom is that You Know Who could not keep his eyes open. <laughs> Do, uh, Daily Show's John Stewart gave his legal analysis of CNN's coverage about this, and uh, take a look. Forty minutes ago, you wrote an observation that that uh, I, I was very surprised. Trump appears to be sleeping; his head keeps dropping down, and his mouth goes slack. Tell us about that. Well, Jake, he appeared to be asleep. Hey, Jake. What part of head down, eyes closed, drool coming out of his mouth do you not get over here? He's snoring. He's doing the hong shu. He's doing the me, 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 me. Imagine committing so many crimes, you get bored at your own trial. <laughs> so, over 50 potential jurors have already been excused for admitting they could not be impartial. But what for you all was the big takeaway from yesterday? Well, the, the sleeping part is, <laughs> you know, I mean, between the breaking the laws, posing for mugshots, selling Bibles, the man is exhausted. <laughs> but, you know, only a true sociopath can fall asleep in these circumstances. Think about it. Yeah. He's, he could go to jail, he could go to prison, takes a little nap. That requires a psychopathic mentality. Don't in my they say opinion. the innocent person sleeps in jail for the night? There's a saying. I think it's the guilty that. person who's. I'm guilty. Sorry, guilty yeah. person. Yeah. That, that all like makes sense with that. As well. <laughs> okay. Yes, that's the what I meant. The person sleeps the sleep of the of the the psychotic. But I think one thing that kind of <laughs> blared over all of this is that someone with this many legal problems cannot be an effective president of this country, considering all that's going on in the world. Mm -hmm. Right now, we have Iran just bombed Israel. That's right. Russia and Ukraine, the war is still going on. We've got problems here that bipartisan <coughs> concerns about our border and everything mm -hmm. else. And you've got a man right now worrying about paying off a porn star. I'm slightly embarrassed, by the way, every time I look up and I think about what people are dealing with globally and that this is the wall-to-wall -wall circus we have to watch right now. Um, and I'm a bit trumped out at this point. I kind of want the highlight reel at the end of the day. Oh, it's just beginning. Yeah, probably. no, I'm not trumped out at all. I am so beginning. trumped out. This is, this is a legal nerd Super Bowl, right? Like, I'm kind we of excited about this. That's the part <laughs> I need to But th that's exciting to someone like me because, you know, the 50 people said, I can't even be impartial, which I, I admire them for their forthrightness and their honesty, because you have to be <coughs> honest when you're a juror. But I still believe that they will be able to find uh, an impartial jury. They are never going to find someone that doesn't know about the former twice impeached loser president, yeah. right? No one's, no, they're never going to find that. But what I did find also interesting about my Super Bowl is that um, <laughs> the legal teams will be checking the jurors' social media profiles to see if they can assess the truthfulness and intention of what they said during voir dire, which is their questioning. And I think that's really, really important because if you start liking Trump's and you follow Trump stuff on social media, Media, are you going to, are, can you be impartial? I don't really think so. And I think what could happen in a case like this is if you have someone, and, and we were talking about this morning, someone named Clay Travis is sort of telling people to get onto that jury. You get one person that sneaks onto that jury with untoward feelings, that person can hang that jury. How do you and sneak that's, onto a jury? Be, you have to be called. Well, you lie. You lie. You say, yeah, yeah, that's I point. hate Trump. I, I, but I can be impartial, I and I this, then that, and then all of a sudden, that's the, the person. Yeah, what they're going to find a jury of his peers. How many bloated orange <laughs> psychos out there? Yeah, so I would be tough. I was a little bit fascinated by the falling asleep bit of it, and because in my personal experience, he's a very high energy person. But why I buy this is a Maggie Haberman is an impeccable reporter, and other people witnessed it. But he also is somebody who's easily distracted. And when you're in these court hearings, it is procedure, it is motions. Like they go on for hours. Not a whole lot happened yesterday. And it's also a reminder did anyone that anyone else fall asleep? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just and, and by but the that's way, my your point. lawyers tell you. Please look alert. The lawyer was look passing invested. him a note and he couldn't even say it. But it, it does track because I would be in briefings with him on one particular topic and then he would just completely sideline it and take it a different direction. This is like a, the worst case scenario for someone with his attention span. But here's what I'll say is he... This is not a case that keeps him up at night. What worries him about this case is, frankly, I think, how his wife may respond to things that come out in testimony. Does he really care? There's a personal <laughs> he element. He care about but his wife. What he, 
but what he worries about <laughs> is the January 6th case, which we don't know if it will move before the election. That is the primary reason he's running for president, is because if he's convicted in that case, he will see jail time, and he is trying to run for president to outrun the courts so that he can pardon himself. Well, and back That's to the, the legal problems, he could pardon himself on the two federal cases, but, but that Georgia the, case, on this case, he would be, God forbid, but president while doing a trial, like he would have to attend these trials. Correct. And he one thing that he can't say. pardon himself on this New York the, case either. And so the that's federal case. Problem. Yeah, I just yes. mean the federal cases he can. The one that's still lingering after all of this work that he has yeah. to attend but, on the daily but I, will one, be another trial. But I think one what's very more thing, important though, is that he can't pardon himself if he gets convicted case, yeah. on in New York. But the other thing I just want to know is like it is so frustrating as a Republican that this is what we signed up to do again. Like this is the whole campaign: courtrooms, occasionally yeah. traveling, not actually talking about issues vo issues voters care about. And I think like I know how you guys feel about Nikki Haley, but say it was. Nikki Haley, she would be crisscrossing the country. She'd be in two states a day in battlegrounds talking about what voters want to hear about. And we're not getting that. It's honestly such a disservice to the American public that this is what we have. Well, you can thank your Republican colleagues. Well, by yeah. the way, though, it was a short primary that was stacked in Trump's favor. He worked years in advance, as they Sarah pointed out, to make him, it better. Mitch McConnell, all of them, they well, could have done it, and they be. didn't do it, and now we have it. That's, yeah. that's where we're at. Yep. And you know where else we're at? We have a legal note. <laughs> Trump has pleaded not guilty to falsifying business records and has denied ever having an affair with Stormy Daniels. But if Michael Cohen had to go to jail for the same thing, why did, then Trump has to go. It's the same we'll case. I, I think he'll be convicted. I think he'll be convicted, and, and I don't think he'll see jail. I, I, I think he should receive jail time.